Okay, let's get through this super fast. How fast exactly? Too fast for the devil. Um, there's already been an accident over here and a lot of the stuff doesn't line up. On top of that, this wheel arch right here, what happens is that when you get bigger lock on a car and you know, you're running wider tires, you're getting more angle, what ends up happening is this tire hits this uh, wheel tub right here. And so what you end up having to do is cut this section out so that way you can go ahead and get full lock of your wheels without uh, scrubbing any of this. Now you can go ahead and build wheel tubs which are basically pieces of metal, sheet metal that will come down like so. But the thing is, is that when you do that, you take up a lot of the room in the engine bay. And on top of that, if you ever did smash your car in the front again while drifting it, um, this whole section would get crumpled and you have to redo all your work. So the second option to do is tube the front end. When you tube the front end, you basically get the tubing and you go ahead and run it, you know, you do your design for whatever you want to do. And you essentially replace all this sheet metal with tubes. And the benefit of that is depending on the way you design it, you can make it removable, which is the plan that I'm going to be doing is trying to make it removable. And then that way, if um, you ever get in an accident or anything, it'll go ahead and then bend the tubing, right? And it's not going to do any damage anywhere else. And so then you can go ahead and take off that front end. And then if you have a jig set up or you have a spare one, you can go ahead and bolt that up and it's brand new again, like nothing ever happened. On top of that, because there's only tubes running here, all this in the engine bay is going to be open. So you can have a lot more room in your engine bay to run, you know, uh, for all your piping for your turbo setup or whatever you have in mind that you're going to be doing. So that's why I'm going to be tubing the front end. Anyways, the first thing to do is to go ahead and measure the front end. So that way I can go ahead and get the measurements for the amount of material that I would need to buy. With all that measured up, I can now go ahead and cut off the front end of the car. Now let me explain how we're going to do that. The first step and probably the biggest step in the whole entire process is cutting out the spot welds. Now what are spot welds? How do we remove them? Why are we removing them? I'm going to go over right now. Okay, so spot welds. These are spot welds right here. These are factory welds that are done to connect uh, you know, multiple pieces of metal together on the car because most unibody cars are essentially just pieces of sheet metal that are just formed in different ways and then uh, welded together like that from the factory. So in order to set free that front end or any other piece of metal basically that's attached to the car, you need to go ahead and cut out these spot welds. So you can get a spot weld cutter like this. This one's from Harbor Freight. It's uh, I believe $5. And so all you do with this is you essentially just go ahead, take your drill, and then go ahead. This bit moves down and then go over the spot weld and then it'll cut around it. So basically this metal will still stay attached to this metal, but the rest of your panel will separate. And so because of that, you basically have this welded section that's still attached, but then the rest of your panel is separated. And so you can, uh, you know, remove all the pieces that essentially hold your car together just by cutting out these spot welds. Now, when you're using this, you don't want to go too far down though, because let's say if there is a piece that was, uh, you know, on top of here and you know, you go too far down, then you end up cutting into the base metal that you're actually keeping. So you don't want to do that. So when you're using the spot weld cutter, you basically just want to go through the top section that you want to be removed, but you don't want to, you know, go ahead and uh, scratch up this base metal. Now let's say that these two spot welds were drilled out and this panel was free right here. You would still have these pieces of metal that were left onto the base metal. And so what we're going to have to do is go back with a flap disc on a grinder and then grind down those uh, areas of metal which are still welded to the car. So then that way this panel can become flat again in just one piece of metal rather than being a piece of metal with two lumps where uh, the metal used to be welded on. And so this is an automatic center punch. What this does is it dimples. There we go. So what it does is it leaves a little dimple wherever you go ahead and put this marker at. So if you put this in the center, then when you're using your spot weld cutter, it'll stay in that dimple. And so when you're cutting it, it's not going to go and walk off everywhere and it's just going to stay in the center and then cut out the spot weld where you want it to be cut out. So that's why we center punch and that's why we're using the spot weld cutter. 
Okay, so now you know that what the plan is, let's go ahead and do the front end. First thing is to remove the seam sealer, which you can go ahead and do with the scraping tool, which you can see me using. But uh, what I did find out later on is it's much easier just to go ahead and take a little wire wheel on a drill, and this removes the, the sealer like 10 times faster, and on top of that it gets down to bare metal, so it's already prepped for welding. Damn. Uh. Now that we can see the spot welds, go ahead and center punch them, so that way it keeps the drill bit from wobbling around. Yeah. Then use the spot weld cutter to cut around the spot weld, which will then make the panel free. Uh. Yeah. So pretty much that's the idea right there. With that free no longer attached, we need to cut and free the far side of the front end. We're gonna do that with a cut off disc on an angle grinder, pretty simple. With that done, the whole top section is free now. So the next step is to free the bottom portion of the front end which is attached to the frame rail. Same process as the top, super simple. Remove sealer, center punch, cut out the spot weld, go ahead and cut anything else that's in the way. Also I had my head in the shot for about like 80% of the video so <laughs> I don't really have too much footage that's actually usable. Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and take the grinder with the flat disc on there. Kinda just gonna hit up here. So that way I can expose where the spot welds are at, and then go ahead and drill those out. Now, because of the position of the engine right now, I can't drill out the spot welds over here. And so because of that, I'm gonna have to end up just cutting this for the time being to get this out. And then once I have like the mock-up for where the tube front should be and I don't need the engine in here anymore, then once I pull the engine, I can go ahead and then remove those properly, you know, and then do, do the rest of the work. I also forgot to mention that somewhere along the line I removed the braces for the bumper as well as for the hood latch and uh, you know that kind of attaches to the front end so with that removed the front end can actually be removed now. With all that disconnected, there's just one more area to cut through with the angle grinder, and uh, that was near where the uh, front bumper support would mount to. Sick. Yay! This is so fun right now. With that side free, I just repeated the process on the other side. Dangerous. All right, see, there we go. All right, now for these ones on the lower side where I can't really reach them, I can just use a flap disc on the grinder 
and go ahead and then just rub down basically the weld until it gets loose, which you can see that's what I did there. Alright, so now with the bottom all cut. All right, now this is how the car sits with the front end cut off of it, ready to go ahead and now tube the front. It looks so empty right now, like there's no template. It's going to be pretty fun to, you know, try and mock up everything on it. So, yeah. All right, so now that I have the front end off, I'm going to go ahead and remove this piece that I couldn't reach before. And uh, I'm just going to do that by taking a flap disc with a grinder on here and then removing the spot welds. And then after that, just kind of prying it off. Alright, so this is the piece that I got off. There's still just a little bit more that I'm probably going to get later on um, when I have the engine out and everything like that. Um, right now, I'm going to go ahead and then um, start grinding down the rest of these spot welds left and make everything smooth. Alright, so I ground them down, and now on some of these you can see where I went too far with the spot weld cutter. And so the it's flat here, but however I cut into the base metal. And so later on what I might do is um, go ahead and just either weld that up, or put a body filler and then fill it up that way. Alright, so there we go. Now it's uh, smoothened out again. Alright, so I just kind of lightly cut the back with the cutoff disc on the grinder. And then I was just able to uh, go ahead and then wiggle it off. And there you go. That was a clean cut right there. Which I should have probably done on the other side. Now that I've gone ahead and sanded these back, I'm going to go ahead and just primer it really quick. And that's just to cover the raw metal so that way when it's sitting out right now during all the fabrication stuff it doesn't rust. So just like that the front end is off. How fast? Too fast for the devil. One more thing needs to be done though before starting the work on the tube front. That's stitch welding. Stitch welding is also a pretty simple process. First thing is to remove any paint or seam sealer to get down to the bare metal so that way we can go ahead and weld it. All right, so in order to reach the seam in the sheet metal over here, we're gonna remove this seam sealer and then that way we can go ahead and then look at that seam and then stitch weld it. So you can use a variety of tools to do this. I just happen to have a, an air scraper so that's what I'm gonna use because it works pretty fast. There is still seam sealer in between the gaps of the sheet metal and so that's going to cause contamination when welding so we need to get that out. 
What I found to be a good method is just a wire wheel on a drill. You can also use it on an angle grinder or something else. And basically these little wires, they reach in between that gap and they can get out the sealant. For instance, over here you can see that there's no seam sealer over here, and yet over here there is. So it kind of just reaches in there and then uh, scrapes it up. just going to mark every one inch for the welds that we are going to do. Alright, now for the most part these joints are clean of seam sealer as well as paint and anything else that would get in the way of welding. So I'm going to go ahead and start marking up the areas to uh, stitch weld. Alright, so what I've done now is marked up with a sharpie all the uh, spots that I'm going to go ahead and stitch weld. And so these marks are basically one inch apart from each other. So, you know, just taking a sharpie, tape measure, and then marking up an inch. Go ahead and continue that and you get all of this. Now for some areas over here um, it was eyeballed more of an inch. I kind of measured but then I also just went with what would work out best for this area. Like for these corners wouldn't exactly be an inch and you know same for this whole area over here. Now there is also a seam in the back over here as well as you know the frame rails in the front. And so those are going to be done when the engine is out, just because we can have better access to it with the welder. So for the time being, because we're going to be tubing the front over here and having um, all the tube and plate welded over here, I'm going to go ahead and get this out of the way first, because this is already going to be stripped to do all that tube work. And so it just kind of makes sense that we would go ahead and do this now. Also, I want to discuss a couple ways to doing the stitch welding. There are two main methods. The first one is where you weld an inch of continuous bead and then skip an inch and then weld a, be a continuous bead of one inch and then skip an inch like that and then there's the method which I'm going to be doing which is where you just basically um, put these essential tack welds in uh, these areas which are just spots of weld bang 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 in these one inch increments now there's a reason why I'm doing those type of stitch welds over the continuous one inch beads and so I'll go ahead and name them. So the first reason being load distribution. It just makes more sense to me having these uh, spots of weld every inch compared to having a you know seamless bead over here of an inch and then a gap of an inch because then it seems like you're making a super strong area and then you know like an, an inch with nothing and then a super strong an inch with nothing. So it just seems to have better load distribution having these spots of weld going about and then that way you have that play in between and you don't have a super, super strong area and then a, you know an area with nothing. Yeah, so I think just having these spots of weld there would give better load distribution. Now onto the second reason. Second reason is because of heat and distortion. Now if you guys know welding sheet metal, you can uh, oftentimes if you heat up an area too much, you can go ahead and deform the sheet metal or um, even worse, you can go ahead and then blow a hole through the metal. So when you're welding these one inch continuous beads, I think there is a higher chance of you blowing through the sheet metal and on top of that also distorting the base sheet metal. So by doing spots of weld every inch, there is going to be better heat dissipation throughout the shock tower. I think you're going to have lower chance of blowing through the metal as well as deforming it over doing the one inch beads. Okay, now for the third reason. Everyone who's welded knows it that, you know, kind of depending on the lighting and your circumstances and how experienced you are with the welder, Sometimes you can overshoot the length that you want to weld, especially on a flat panel like this where um, it's not coming up to an edge of a metal so you know there's nothing else there to weld, where you just have these sharpie marks to indicate where you're supposed to be stopping at. So I've seen this on a couple cars before, and that's where they do a bead that's a little bit longer than an inch, and then, you know, then they take their gap, then they do a bead that's exactly an inch, and they do one that's, you know, a little bit longer again, and so you get that inconsistency around it all. And that's mainly just for aesthetics. And when you look at something that's done like that, it just looks 
very amateur and not planned out as well. Again, another benefit of just doing these spots of weld is you can just go ahead and then point the welder there, pull the trigger, and then weld it, and then move on to the next spot, and they will all look more or less very uniform with one another. So first one seems like it would have better load distribution. Second one to avoid um, distortion as well as blowing through the sheet metal. And then the third one, which is for aesthetics. Now, I also know some of you guys are going to ask, what is stitch welding? Well, stitch welding is basically where you weld the seams of sheet metal together that make up a unibody car. And so as you can see here, there's this sheet of metal, there's this sheet of metal, and there's this sheet of metal, this sheet of metal, this sheet of metal, this sheet of metal. So these are all separate, and these, as you can see, these are all spot welded from the factory together. Now, this car has over 240,000 miles on it, so you can imagine 240,000 miles worth of vibration on these welds makes them fairly weak. And as you can see, these factory welds are quite spaced from each other, and so when you do your stitch welding, it makes the whole structure much stronger because you're tying it in in more points, and on top of that, these are you know fatigued weld spots that have been you know over 240,000 miles of driving on them. So you're getting fresh welds right here and more welds, so you're basically getting a much stiffer and responsive chassis because of it. Also, another thing, it doesn't really weigh much to do the whole entire car, and on top of that, it doesn't really cost much if you have the welder. It's kind of just gas and wire, which are fairly cheap, and you can just go ahead and do them. side is also marked up and I made sure to go back and forth from one side to the other to make sure that there is an even number of welds on each shock tower and to double check the spacing and you know I had to go back and forth and you know uh, sometimes I erase some marks over there just to get it even and uh, you know vice versa back and forth doing that sort of thing. Double check the marks we make to make sure that they are identical from one side to the other so that way you know one side doesn't have like 40 stitch welds and the other side has 20 stitch welds because you know for some reason you messed up on your measurements. Then wipe clean the surface with acetone and prep it just like you would any other surface that you're going to go ahead and weld on. Alright now just to make a little bit more room around here while doing all this uh, welding on the shock tower, I'm going to go ahead and remove the brake master cylinder. So the first thing is there's just this one connector over here. And now I'm going to start removing the brake lines. Alright, so finally got that last um, line disconnected and I was just using a vice grip super tight on there and then kind of twisting it to make it tighter because sometimes you know, to break it loose you kind of have to go in the opposite direction that you want to loosen it from just to kind of play with it. So I went ahead and tightened it a little more and it seemed to break it and then after that went ahead and loosened it up. Alrighty then, there we go. Also for you guys out there, you should also know that Sharpie is removed with acetone so you're going to have to be careful with your marks. Then simply weld all the spots. Also something to note, uh, when you are stitch welding, you are supposed to have the car on as level of a surface as you can because, you know, the chassis kind of tweaks and flexes a little bit. So since you're going to go ahead and be welding it in that position, it's more or less going to be stuck in that position. So the, le the more level the ground is, the straighter the chassis is going to end up being once you weld it all together. So I'm in the most level place I can find, which is in the garage. And that's where I'm doing all this at. It's not 100% perfect, but it's as close as I can get. Clean this up now with the wire wheel.
All right, so now I'm just having some decision making to make because there is a small gap here, which you can see because obviously the factory spot welds are somewhere down here. And so the, look, you can see there's no gap here and there's a gap here. So I have the choice of either just welding it as is with this little gap, which is not even like a millimeter. I mean, it's so small. Or I can uh, try and get someone to come with a screwdriver and then push that piece of sheet metal against the other piece. And that way, when I weld it, it welds it flat. I'm going to grind back some of these welds because they were done when the welder was uh, acting up and they just turned out bad. So I'm going to just uh, grind them down a little bit and then redo the welds. Alright, so now with the shock tower stitch welded, as well as over here stitch welded, I can go ahead and then start working on tubing the front. Now, this isn't completely done yet. I still want to go ahead and stitch weld more of the seams as well as the back of the uh, shock tower down this line over here. However, that's going to be more accessible when the engine's out, so that's what I'm going to be waiting for. So right now, this is just for the time being, since I was going to tube the front anyways, might as well do this while I was uh, waiting for parts to come in and everything. See, it wasn't that fast. Not really. That wraps this episode up now. We basically removed the front end of the car, then uh, went ahead and did some stitch welding in the engine bay. Not completely stitch welded yet, and that we're going to do the rest of that when the uh, engine is pulled, of course. But for right now, it's basically prepped to the point where we can go ahead and start uh, doing the tube front on it. Now, if you like the uh, Too Fast for a Devil shirt in this video, you can find that on whatmonstersdo.com. You can go ahead and use the coupon code LEDRIFT and you get 15% off your order. So that's pretty sick. Uh, so if you like the shirt, go ahead and check that out and use that coupon code. Now, if you enjoyed the video, you can go ahead and give it a like. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave it in the comments. Of course, like basically, if I don't respond to your question, just know that you don't have a reply button under your comment because basically I'm going to reply to every single question that's asked. So uh, just check that, please. It's in your YouTube settings. Go ahead and check that. Uh, anyways, if you want to go ahead and stay updated on build, you can go ahead and click subscribe as well. And then, you know, get all the latest videos in your subscription box. I think that pretty much wraps it up for everything. All right, so that wraps it up for now. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And I, don't, I honestly really don't know anything else to say. Yeah. <laughs> See you guys. Good. Ah.